It is a little alarming because it is only running on five out of six cylinders. Well, this is embarrassing. Silly me forgot to check that the tailgate was down. Come back here in the morning and blow down the headers, do all that sort of stuff, get them ready. So hopefully the headers can be going by nine o'clock. We are back here in the morning. I think everyone else is still in bed. Um, it does look like they might have gone a little later than anticipated last night um, because we've got uh, the big mother bin has not been full for a day or so, but the other mother bin was would have been nearly empty. Um, and Josiah was trucking with the comma from that to the silos, and they've also filled up the Coolman, so that's the yellow chaser bin. So they'll be. That should hold about 30 tonne of canola and both mother bins full would probably be close to 200 or maybe a little bit over. So that is that is good but we did get a bit of a dew overnight so it might take a little bit longer than we thought to actually get harvesting. But um, yeah while the other guys are getting ready for the morning um, I've got to go around and grease, fuel up and blow down all the headers so we'll um, better get into it Both headers pretty well ready to go. Um, yeah, there was a bit of running around, so I didn't film all of it, but you get the gist. It was just blowing down, greasing, doing all the boring stuff. Um, Josiah was doing the other header a bit. A couple of little things to fix, but um, yeah. Header number one there is just about ready to go, and header number two is down somewhere down there harvesting since we started a um, couple of days ago and yesterday was the first big day that we've put in it um yeah we've got probably 360 tons off so um, yeah that's a magnificent result well I think so far things are going pretty well we've actually just got the uh, yellow echo back in action so we quickly put the radiator in it um, I'm just making sure it's all okay. And then if we need to, um, yeah, we can get carton with it as well, which would be a great problem to have if we couldn't keep the grain away from the headers. And usually with this sort of thing, we'd be getting a couple of road trains in um, to take the grain while we're harvesting. Um, and it's pretty easy with canola because it's not as, um, not as many tons come off. But um, yeah, because the roads are so cut out, um, understandably, and there's so many roads, that are so cut that are cut out really badly um, they've all got road close signs on them and for liability's sake um, it's very difficult to get a truck to go on a road closed road um, just because yeah it, it, you open yourself up to all sorts of different issues so uh, we're battling trying to get some roads open so we can um, we can get some trucks in here but thankfully we we should be able to store majority of it at least probably what we're likely to get off before this next rain event. Um, we can store it up here if we have to. Um, just, just not ideal, but that's, that's what you gotta do. Well, I think most of the shed jobs and that is pretty tidied off, so 
Um, I'll just come down here and I'm going to take over from Phil for an hour or so. He can have a have a bit of a rest. See if I can remember how to drive it. My first time on the header this season. But um, yeah, seems to be going pretty good. Just um, like canola that's half of it's gone down a bit. You um, yeah, you got to just be wary of how it's feeding into the front. Um, you want it all to go in quite quite evenly. Um, otherwise, you get a big wad of canola and it'll come through and uh, cause issues. So um, you can also see there's quite a bit of down stuff. Um, so we just have to go a little bit lower, which yeah makes it tricky to feed as well. But it's um, certainly worth getting. It's it's yielding good at the minute. Um, if uh, another storm or something came, there'd be a lot more that um, that would be lost just from shelling out. There's already quite a lot had shelled out um, with all the rain and, and wind and that, but it's um, still a decent crop. The other thing that's working well is we got the diff lock down there. So the, the other header, header number two, had this when we got it, um, and because um, if you're following along, this header, header number one, um, had some transmission issues and there was some bits and pieces in the transmission and the uh, spider gears had, had worn out. That meant that, you know, just because it was so much, um, yeah, the spider gears were working overtime because one wheel was spinning all the time. So we thought while we've got the transmission out and getting it all fixed up, we'll um, we'll fit the diff lock and that's that's proven to be quite helpful. Hold your speed and come in a bit. put some trucks on the road so this is the first load of canola that's going out um, so that truck there would hold probably 60 ton or thereabouts a little bit over I think um, so yeah that'll be good we shouldn't have to cart any more um, to the silos well my stint is done I think it was about a bit over three hours I was only gonna take over for an hour or so but that's all right in the yards on a nice day while everyone else is harvesting. These things are more like horses at the minute. Uh, there's 12 steers so they get a bit of wind in their nostrils and they run. So these steers are actually uh, Brad and Phil's families steers they just got them and I think different kids will have different ones and um, yeah so it's just a, a hobby thing but I, uh, I need a hand here to try get them get them back in the yard but I can't everyone's busy what I've been doing um, in between chasing cattle that got out um, and all of that sort of stuff is I've been fitting a few couple of things to this um, we got the UHF up here and um, the handpiece and all that there and we've got put an Anderson plug um, underneath here around there so if we've got a pump or anything on the back here it can just plug into that and, and run that um, and we've got a the aerial for the UHF there so that's all pretty done now and that should keep him happy for a little bit longer at least that's what we hope uh, but anyway, I might throw the drone up and um, we'll, we'll see what we find.
breakdown. Um, I think uh, the drum on the front, which uh, helps draw in all the material into the feeder house, um, it looks like it's either snapped a shaft or the mounts are broken. Um, it is actually an aftermarket one that we put on this machine, um, just yeah, to be able to handle canola a bit better. It can handle ma uh, bulk material a bit easier. Um, it has been good for years and, and that, but um, yeah, obviously something's happened. So we'll, uh, I've just got to get the front off and then inspect. Righto, we're just going to give it a quick blow down. Looks like it's broken up in here. So we do have the original one there that we're going to have to put on. Upon further inspection, what's happened here is just the end cap, which is welded on here. You can see where there, there, and there, the welds have torn out. So that whole end cap is still over there. We're just trying to get that out now. And um, we're gonna pull that out, be able to weld that back on. We did think that like a shaft in here had snapped or the shaft that links that end plate to this had snapped. But thankfully, um, I think it's gonna be a bit easier than that. So we should be able to put this one back on. The original ones are fatter, so they're a bigger diameter. So the idea of this is that you can have the bulk materials like canola go through easier, um, and it's not a restriction. So it can grab onto it and bring it through quicker. So that's the idea there. actually get to test the lights on this header now we've got it all the header front's all good to go so we're just about to hook up but um, yeah you can see the big spotlights the ones we put up they're those ones and um, yeah they do a really good job maybe almost a little too much distance but um, yeah no it's it's pretty good and the side ones down there are working well um, to shine behind the comb and um, yeah I think all in all it's a it's a very nice lighting system on this so it's um yeah definitely an upgrade um, the other thing i did which i didn't mention before was on the mirror lights they're usually only used for when you open the door or lift the comb up um, a certain height and i actually rewired them or fiddled around with the triggers for the relays and got that to come on with the normal lights but still come on when you open the door after you turn the machine off so you can still see what you're doing so that gives a bit more light out out towards there so that's um that's good oh we'll hook this up and get going again i'm just here double checking that everything's tidied off in the shed phil's gone off on the header and he's gonna get going again so it's about i think 9 30 um and yeah that's sort of been going till about 12 o'clock one o'clock um in the morning so it just gets a bit dewy and damp and hard to feed and yeah it gets a bit messy so um yeah we might get another four hours in um, and then tomorrow we're um, heading to church in the morning and then by about probably 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, we'll be back into it. So we'll see, uh, see how much we can get done before this rain. Well, that was a bit of a time jump, but it is actually Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening, I should say. Um, I'm on header number two. 
just finishing off one of the paddocks here I'm on the last strip here you can see there um, and yeah it's uh, it seems to be going pretty well um, so yeah this is the lights on header number two now header number two had the light bar um, you can see there um, it, it does spread quite quite wide so there to there um, and it's yeah pretty bright so certainly does a good job of that um, it's got enough distance and yeah it's, it's just a nice even um, even spread so that's really good so yeah all in all it's um it's pretty good I think it could probably do with some more lights out there and there I might have to do what I did with the other header and so the mirror lights are on all the time that'll just help help fill in that bit of a gap there but um, it's uh, yeah it's looking good we'll uh, probably head over to the other paddock that basically the last paddock we've got to do which is about 125 hectares um, and that's the last paddock of canola so we'll probably uh, won't finish that other paddock um, tomorrow but we can give it a red hot crack I think so we'll see what happens well we're just uh, gonna knock off it's about uh, it's nearly 12 30 actually in the morning um, and yeah just gets once the dew settles a bit uh, and it gets really hard to thrash and yeah it just gets yeah it can be in the space of five minutes everything can be going fairly good and then just nah doesn't want to happen so um, yeah I think we'll see whether we get any they're not really talking rain tonight but there is a few um, yeah there is a band of rain out to the west a bit which um, is coming this way not sure whether it'll make it here but um, we'll button up all the tarps and and uh, yeah try and get prepared just in case it does rain and uh, but yeah hopefully we can we can get a bit more done tomorrow and um, yeah we don't don't have a lot in the scheme of things we don't have a lot of canola left probably another hundred bit over 100 hectares so um, hopefully we can get a fair chunk of that done tomorrow anyway we'll leave it here and uh, see what happens tomorrow well good morning guys it is a little bit windy it's a little bit drizzly but um, yeah where the headers are still going this morning so we um, yeah like I said last night knocked off at about 12 30 or so um, got going early again this morning but it is just with the dew and everything um, the seed is a little bit wet so it's about 10% moisture um, it needs to be at 8 but we do have about 60 ton in one of the silos um, over there of really dry stuff it was like five percent and we've got Josiah on the Kuhlman chaser bin so he's coming from the headers um, and I'm gonna go on this tractor and this chaser bin and get a similar amount of what he's just put in from the silo and dump it on top of that and that way it should all blend in so that's we should uh, should equal out to be about seven seven and a half percent moisture then so we can um, that just means we can keep harvesting even though it's a bit wet but yeah there is a bit of a rain rain shower here it's not a big one but um, it may not be enough to have to pull the headers up but we'll just have to wait and see Rains are here, so we um I don't know how much we've got left down there. There's probably uh, looking at that. There's there's probably 70 hectares left, 60, 70 hectares left, um, and that's of all the canola on this block. So that's out of um, what 500 odd hectares. So that is um that is a magnificent result. We are absolutely absolutely thankful. Um, and all in all the canola yielded um, probably a bit better than we were thought too so um, it worked out to be uh, I haven't checked the averages but it's been around the two to two and a half um, ton to the hectare so absolutely great and um, there hasn't been any real damage there was a bit of shelling out um, earlier on with that the big rain when the flood came um, but yeah it's it's been 
been really good. So we've been able to get the majority off. Um, but anyway, that's an excellent result for the first section of harvesting in between rain events. So we'll um, see what we're doing in the next one. We've probably got a few shed jobs to do and a few things to fix up. But um, see how much rain we get and um, then hope it doesn't take too long to dry out. Yeah.